Well, thank you very much, Joe. I feel very much as if I'm home here. Bill Donaldson is the friend who convinced me to go and run the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. I don't know quite what sins I committed as a young man to deserve that, but I thought after the cre creation of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, it was important that they have somebody who wouldn't scare the auditors even more and would encourage the audit profession, which I think we were successful in doing, to take on its area of responsibility even more so than they had in the past. Pete Peterson was my last chairman at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And uh, Ben Heineman is the son of two of Suzanne's and mine. My wife was here, dearest friends from Chicago. Ben Sr. was the senior outside director of the First National Bank of Chicago. I have been asked to talk about monetary policy. So how does the Federal Reserve fit in to what has been going on in the last couple of years? You will recall that under the Humphrey Hawkins Act, the Federal Reserve as an independent central bank that is responsible to the Congress but not to the administration is responsible for a monetary policy which is meant to promote, promote sustainable economic growth and price stability. Sustainable economic growth is a definition which is easy to give. It is growth that continues over a period of time as long as possible. And price stability is not meant to be zero inflation. It is rather thought to be close to 2%. You may remember the European Central Bank actually has a goal of inflation which is near but not quite as much as 2%. Why is a little inflation encouraged or permitted by central banks? The reason, which is very much a matter of point now, is deflation is about the worst thing that can happen to an economy. If deflation really sets in, it means that individuals and businesses are convinced that if they delay a purchase as long as they can, that the price will be lower. And therefore, why not delay the purchases, which means that you have negative economic growth almost certainly. Whereas a little inflation is, even if you have 2% inflation, the price level increases, doubles every 36 years. But that is thought to be something which is much more man manageable socially, and therefore it is better to have the risk of a little bit of inflation. The Federal Reserve actually, when the crisis began in the summer of 2007, with the problems of two of uh, Bear Stearns hedge funds, was in a stance of monetary policy which was fairly tight. The federal funds rate, the policy rate, was at five and a quarter percent. And the first thing the Fed had to do, because it found itself with a balance of risk statement at the last FOMC meeting, which had been more concerned about inflation than it had about weak growth. So as a result, the Fed reduced the discount rate rather than the Fed funds rate from a margin of 1% over the Fed funds rate to a half and began to encourage the banks to, to take advantage of the discount window in order to be able to have more money available in the system. As, the, as time passed and the financial services system began more to freeze up, the Fed became more aggressive and more creative in creating a variety of alphabet soup of instruments that encouraged the private sector financial system to look to the Federal Reserve as a source of liquidity. And that continued through the rest of 2007, but in 2008 it became very clear from a dramatic decrease in the Fed funds rate at a non, between meetings of the Federal Open Market Committee that Ben Bernanke, the then chairman and his still chairman, and I hope will be chairman for a long time, uh, and his colleagues realized that the real economy was being a problem. Actually, we now know that the recession is dated by the National Bureau of Economic Research of having started the previous month in December 2007. So the Federal Reserve since that time, just to capsule the history, has been aggressively doing two things. It's been easing traditional monetary policy through the use of the Fed funds rate, but it's now got it down to 0% to a quarter. So for all practical purposes, since you can't go negative on the Fed funds rate, they no longer have that as a particularly useful policy instrument. 
until some point in the future, which I will address. Therefore, they must do what is called in the trade quantitative easing, and that is to buy securities. They're buying mortgage-backed securities over about 600 billion by this time with a target of 1.25 trillion. They are about a little more than halfway through a plan to buy about $300 billion in treasury securities. That, of course, adds money to the financial system. And then they have continued the very creative use of various discount instruments or effectively discount instruments to again provide money to the system. Now, do we have to worry that when the recovery comes, that there will be rampant inflation. I don't believe so, because I think the Federal Reserve is very aware, and Ben Bernanke began to talk about it <clears throat> in testimony to a House of Representatives committee about three and a half weeks ago, and that is that at a certain point, the Federal Reserve will have to withdraw monetary accommodation, otherwise you will have so much money slopping around in the financial system that inflation would have all the lubrication it would need, and that would be terrible for the American people. Now, exactly the way that the Fed decides to retract its accommodation will depend on the time. There are various instruments that can be used. The Fed can now pay interest on reserves, so an easy way to do it would be to actually offer a reasonably attractive interest rate on reserves. That would encourage the banking system to begin to supply more reserves to the Federal Reserve, thus reducing the money supply and reducing the opportunity for inflation. To some degree, at a time when confidence in government and government institutions, including central banks, is placed at risk and in jeopardy, as Ms. Ted has very nicely pointed out, that is going to have to be something in which the American people will, I believe, have to trust the Federal Reserve. And I believe the history of the Federal Reserve going back to its creation in 1913 is such that that is faith that can be well placed. Thank you.